And good evening. Welcome to Creative Agenda for Tuesday, May 16th. My name is Chris Bjorklund, and this evening with Caitlin Perkins. And our guest this evening is local photographer, printer, artist, and musician Andre Ferrella. And we welcome him this evening to WRT. Thanks so much, Andre, for being here. Thank you. And we are listening, I should mention, to a band, a group by the name of uh, Earth Boys. And in fact, a CD put out by two of the members, Thomas Ferrella and Kevin Schaefer. And uh, Thomas being uh, Andre's brother. And uh, Andre, you're on the CD as well. Let's see, are you on the... Um, yes. Most cuts, I believe, on this. The uh, name of the CD is Effigy. It came out in 98. And I mention this because Andre's been working with uh, the group in ways other than music lately. He's been doing uh, some computer animation work, utilizing some of the music that the Earth Boys have been doing lately and working on uh, his computer and manipulating images and feeding images into the computer and then uh, going from there and, uh, and, and compiling a uh, music visual mix. Mm-hmm. So maybe we can talk a little bit about that down the road, but first I, maybe we should mention how you got to that point in your artistic career. Um, you're from Michigan area originally and you came to Madison right, to go to uh, graduate school, school, graduate school at the UW. Mm-hmm. And uh, what was your um, focus at the time? Printing, printing, printing. printing. Mm-hmm. photography, etching, woodcutting, and then eventually I went into photography mm-hmm. as a result of printmaking because I was using photographic imagery at the time with my printmaking processes and realized that that is such a laborious process taking weeks and months at a time to make an image that um, I incorporated uh, photography as the main medium, incorporating basically lithography, etching, painting, and drawing onto the photographic negative itself, rather than the photographic print, Mm -hmm. which was common to paint on photographic paper after the print. So I began painting on the negative, and the results were very very interesting because once you blew that image up to whatever scale it retained the finesse of the line and the paint itself can you talk about how you figured out this process was it an accident or it's actually when i was uh younger i was a paint i've been a painter since i've been 12 years old and i knew this was what i was going to do for the rest of my life so um, I saw an exhibition 300 years after Rembrandt, and when I saw that exhibition, I said, I really have to, uh, it was in Detroit, Detroit Institute of Arts, and I says, oh, I, I, have, to, I have to really move. <laughs> <laughs> He's great. And his use of light really influenced me. So uh, when I, I, I experimented photographically when I was younger, in my teens, and then only used photography uh, as a documentation of my paintings and drawings. So when I was in graduate school, I incorporated the photographic medium as my main medium. What was your question again? But the actual process, it seems like an odd thing to do to discover that you could let the negative sit or paint on them and they didn't disintegrate or how mm-hmm. did that come about? It's the way that I work. I work in a very experimental way, as the Germans would call it, Zufall, chance. And I might also reflect at it as being like the hand of God or the hand of spirituality and and guidance with, especially photography using light Mm -hmm. and that almighty substance that we're very happy to have here on Earth. What size negatives are you using? These are 35 millimeter negatives. Mm -hmm. And you asked that question, where did it come from? It actually came to me in uh, dream states Mm -hmm. where I realized... um, how I can do it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it just was there. and But it was also accumulation of past experiences mm-hmm. in printmaking and painting. And photographing details of butterflies, wings, or trees of bark, or patterns in nature. And I love the patterns in nature. And that whole concept of the relationship in, in pattern technology. So <clears throat> I wanted to use that photographically as it is from nature, but 
that was the ability of photography to actually be able to extract that in its realistic form and texture and shape and color. So by painting on the negative, which allowed me to actually use the paint as a layer mask, sort of to allow different uh, light, shades of light and color to pass through the film of the original photograph, but also passing through the layer of paint. So it gave this very textural quality as though it was a painting. So the photograph ends up looking like a painting. It's mm -hmm. almost indistinguishable from a painting, except you realize, oh, this is very flat. Mm -hmm. This is non-textural, but the optical illusion is incredible. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so it was this whole basis of organic studying of nature that led to a lot of these processes. <clears throat> yeah. Now, I should mention, you have a website, and people are welcome to go to that website right now as we're talking. It might be very helpful to see Andre's images as we talk about them and talk about his work. And his uh, web page is www.livingmuseum.com. All one word, livingmuseum.com. And where does that come from? Living Museum comes from the living picture process, mm -hmm. which was a discovery in 1994-95 and that was the next step in my career was this discovery of this photographic process <clears throat> which is a very interesting process incorporating actual organic materials changing the actual structure of the photographic negative mm -hmm. and again not on the photographic print but on the negative itself using that as the base so I'll describe that process a little bit and those of you who are out there who are looking at the website um, feel free to take a look at uh, once you enter the site called Discovery of the Living Picture mm -hmm. and that'll give you some visualizations of what I'm talking about. <clears throat> that process I discovered in my photographic alchemist lab <laughs> which is what the Chicago Tribune and my uh, Chicago Cultural Center show in, um, in Chicago in 1993. Uh, the Chicago Tribune wrote that there's this alchemist working up in Madison, Wisconsin, in this laboratory, <laughs> yeah. calling some kind of medieval alchemy. But um, actually, it, it, it is. It's a very, the way the studio is set up and organized, it, it lends itself to these kind of creative acts that um, are somehow shamanistic, ritualistic, very uh, spiritual, and just the, <clears throat> to me, the act of dealing with light as a substance and being a human that has that ability to use that substance I think is a very wonderful gift to us. So I praise and hail photography and all those who invented it. Back so in 1844. 1844, which is uh, William Henry Fox Talbot and Nias Ford Niepce from England and later latter, uh, from France. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, his, uh, let's see, his work, and you've been compared to uh, William Henry Fox Talbot and his search for the, quote, pencil of nature, unquote, mm -hmm. and uh, which uh, sought to use photography as the language of nature. Mm -hmm. And uh, your work is, uh, with the mold pictures has been uh, compared as retracing and, and completing his search for the pencil of nature. Mm -hmm. That was a statement by the uh, Hubert Beck, a curator from the museum, Museum for Moderne Kunst in Frankfurt, Museum of Modern Art in Frankfurt. He wrote the catalog, uh, which was sponsored by Kodak, and the America House, the United States Information Service, in Germany, which was the premiere of this exhibition. <clears throat> and the way this process works is I discovered in my basement all these working negatives. Uh, I had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of working negatives in which I would extract portions of the photograph to be used on my large-scale processing system, which I taught here a couple years ago at the University of Wisconsin. They have one of my Varela photographic easels, which is a large-scale printing processing system that allows for a lot of creative adventure and through this invention, 
I would take multiple negatives and be, while the paper is developing and processing, I'd be exposing areas of the paper that were still sensitive to light. So I got this incredible layered effect again, that mass, that layered mask I was talking about. Mm -hmm. And these negatives were in my studio on the floor, <clears throat> and eventually they got wet, and they got moldy, and they changed. And I went back to my, when I, when I discovered this in my lab, I was very upset because I thought, here's years and years of working negatives that I wanted to continue photographing. You see, I'm also a painter, so I paint and I photograph, and the two feed each other. So I took those negatives off the floor and held, held them up in their plastic sleeves, and I saw this kind of mushy, wet, kaleidoscoping runniness of color and I went oh god it's it this is over <laughs> and I kept looking at him and I found it to be more and more interesting I pulled one of the negatives out of the sleeves <clears throat> one of the more driered ones and I put it in my enlarger and projected it up on my easel and I was able to project these things uh, six feet by eight feet and what I saw just astounded me because the shapes and the colors and the texture was just incredible. All the imagery that I've been photographing for all these years, these organic patterns, um, just came out in its truest, truest form. And basically I discovered that these uh, negatives are processed in the primordial soup. That's basically what it is, water and mold. So I reenacted this discovery and processed mm -hmm. more and more of these negatives and printed them up <clears throat> large scale. So what has happened is the organic process replaced the silver process. So no matter how large you blow these images up, and I've blown them up four feet by 18 feet, mm -hmm. that you get this incredible phenomenal detail. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, similar to, say, some of the uh, Hubble space photographs. Hubble space. Yeah, these images have been... Mm -hmm. These images have been compared with the, some of the uh, Hubble Space Telescope in terms of its macrocosmic and mi microcosmic imagery. Mm -hmm. And this, here they are from, you know, millions of light years wide from Hubble and yeah. um, on a 35 millimeter negative in the same kind of patterns and compositions and structures, you have almost the identical um, imagery. Mm -hmm. So it just says to me, whatever is happening out there is happening here, and whatever is happening here is happening there. So there's got to be this incredible connection to everything. And I think that's one of the important points of my work, is the discovery and um, knowledge that I've gained in using my artistic skills to show us this. Have you mastered these <coughs> organisms? Have you been able to manipulate them and make them do what you want? Or no, no. I <clears throat> after I take them out of the batch, mm -hmm. the processing, which process some months to years at a time, um, some I'll leave just like they are because they're just elegant and beautiful and say enough. And others I I will change. Mm -hmm. And have you figured out which organisms work best for you? Have you played around with that? No, I I've been talking to a few scientists at the University of Wisconsin, and uh, there's a, a couple people who are going to do some research on what the actual organisms, some microbiologists, are going to figure out. What I wonder if it's like a cheese cave where it's different than <coughs> any person that might be doing this, and they're different dark rooms. If they have different things appearing, that'd be interesting. Yeah, it's very interesting. I have an image for those of you who are on the website and looking. There's a if you go to a, a thing and called. And that's www livingmuseum.com? Yes, all one word. It's called uh, Encrypture. And what it is, is a three-panel piece. It's three separate negatives from the uh, different Egyptian sarcophagi at the British Museum in London. And um, what happened was these were just straight, full details. And this process, these negatives were in there for about four years. Mm -hmm. What happened is the the mold and mildew and water reformed itself back into the shape of a sarcophagus mm -hmm. without me photographing the head, a mm -hmm. middle, and a tail. And you can see leftover Egyptian inscription mm -hmm. throughout the whole image. So it somehow says to me, yeah. 
They, 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 they know. <laughs> and this is where we come from. We, mm-hmm. we come from the primordial soup. So perhaps is this is where our knowledge stems from, and they really know. They still are in existence with us, and we need them to exist. Mm-hmm. And uh, that image, also I should mention, is uh, featured if uh, somebody's out in the CD store, pick up Roscoe Mitchell's Sound Songs, and it's featured uh, I, on the liner notes. You can spread out the liner notes, uh, and over, uh, what is it, five, four pages, uh, catch Andre's image of... Uh, Encryption. Encryption. Now, and it's called Encryption for two reasons. I believe it's like an encrypted scripture. Hmm. It's mm-hmm. a combination of those two words. Mm-hmm. Especially when I saw that. That just yeah. gave me yeah. chills and I thought, yeah. yes, there's something deep here that's going on that uh, definitely needs to be looked at and considered. Mm-hmm. Now, you brought in a catalog or a calendar from Omega. Did you have a show there? Yes, I had an exhibition there. They uh, published me in their 1997 catalog as a discoverer to the living picture. Mm-hmm. <coughs> it was called The Mold Picture by German curator Hewitt Beck. And Martha Stahl wrote the text to the catalog uh, for Promega. And uh, I, once I printed one of the images a second time, I realized that they're actually living, that the negative changed from uh, one month to the next. So once it's warm and uh, uh, moist, the negatives change. So they're always, uh, I call them the living pictures because they're in a constant, con- constant state of, uh, of change. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just like life. Yeah, well, that's very good. Um, now, maybe you can go on and, and speak about how your work has developed since the uh, mold pictures and what you've been uh, working on now. And I just I was able to witness some of the spectacular computer animation that you've been uh, utilizing, and mm-hmm. you hope to combine with the music of the Earth Boys. Mm-hmm. And. Uh, Maybe you can talk about how you go about those images. Now, those are mostly portraits of people you know, for the most part, or kids in Germany. Mm -hmm. And then you manipulate, you put it, scan it onto the computer, and then manipulate it from there. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? With lenses or, uh, um, let's see, what else is it? All kinds of (laughs) technologies there. (laughs) Um, Yeah, from the mold picture process, I wanted to do a series of portrait works, which were Mm -hmm. exhibited at the uh, Wisconsin Triennial this last year. Mm -hmm. And... um, I realized that as v- it was, I, I was trying to depict where we came from or where we were going through those images like life and death simultaneously and the creation and the destruction of us and what we go through to get there. So I, I discovered the, the digital medium, of course, as, as a lot of us are working in, as also um, another form of creation, the cre- creative imagery, so to be able to manipulate these images to the way I want them um, in more of a <clears throat> sort of a chance way, too, because it's still, it's a digital medium, but I'm still using a chance sort of uh, process on these, which is an, an inherent form of my experimentation, which I think is a very healthy thing for a creative artist to do, to keep alive and to keep fresh. Um, so I would scan portraits of people into the negative, uh, to, to the computer, um, from an actual photograph, still using an analog medium in the first place because it's a very organic feeling, and then change those with an organic technology, uh, which is basically a fractal technology. And uh, those of you who are on the website, you can go to a section called Portraits. And what this technology is doing for me, it's reverberating the person's portrait on themselves to infinity, mm-hmm. like from the beginning and to the end, and there's like no beginning and no end. I start everything basically in the third eye, so what it's doing is remapping the portrait over the person itself over and over and over again, and the results are very, very interesting. Mm-hmm. They're, they're very mm-hmm. uh, um, reminiscent of the mold pictures, of the earlier photographic paintings, and um, <clears throat> this new technology is, is is really very interesting for uh, for us. So is it a mathematical process that goes through the manipulation? Yeah, it's basically a, um, based on Mandelbrot, you know, a fractal, fractal equation where it's z is in equilibrium with z squared plus c, and that's where c is the constant, and z then whatever number you feed it, it constantly refeeds on itself. 
And they're finding out this is how nature is, is what nature is based on, like a tree branches into two trunks, which branches into other branches and branches and branches. So it's basically what happens here happens there. You know, it's like what was on the mold picture uh, resembling Hubble or was Hubble resembling the mold picture. So, and I've done hundreds and hundreds of these portraits because I found them to very, be very interesting because they somehow were bringing out the truth of the individual. And I was able to see deeper and deeper into each person, which was, for me, I was able to get deeper and deeper into myself. So that's, of course, I'm saving all these different states of the, of, of the portrait making. Um, so obviously I realized, oh, it was lending itself to basically cell animation. And uh, this animation that I was making with premiered uh, also at CBIT, which was the world's largest computer expo in Hanover this February, and uh, the Wisconsin Film Festival this year, and then was used as the trailer film for Genghis Blues at the Orpheum um, the week that it was playing. And uh, the results are great. I'm mm -hmm. getting a lot of great response. Yeah. Um, that is fabulous. That's great. And, and it has a kaleidoscopic effect, I guess, is how yeah. I kind of saw it in all these uh, continuing uh, spheres and images of the... It's interesting how the uh, nature of the individual comes out uh, yeah, the indiv through this digital process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, somehow it brings out the individual's inner self. Hmm. I call them mm -hmm. shamans, but uh, I'll be in a show in Chicago in the fall called Buddha. And uh, somehow it just seems like it's bringing out the truth of, of mm -hmm. the human being as a spiritual essence of who we really are. That's very interesting. Fascinating how you've been able to combine uh, the organic with the digital now. And a uh, uh, show in fall in Chicago, where's that at? It'll be at the Oscar Friedel Gallery, and um, that I think is going to be a traveling exhibition as well. Mm. And uh, then I'll be having another show in the fall uh, at the Center for the Visual Arts Gallery, University of Toledo, Toledo Museum of Art. That'll be the mold pictures and the, the, the digital portrait work. And then uh, in the fall also <coughs> the uh, ZDF and Arte, which is France and Germany's CBS television stations, are going to be coming over here and doing a documentary on me for primetime European television on the artist of natural phenomena. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is very exciting, and you have some uh, great... Uh, you've done some uh, great uh, work and uh, some accomplishments, and now you're going to get some more credit for it. So hopefully uh, things are just uh, continuing uh, in an upward and uh, progressive direction for you, Andre. Thank you. And uh, we have to close it out, but uh, best of luck with your, uh, your projects. And, thank you. Uh, and, and thank you so much. And once again, www.livingmuseum.com. Mm -hmm. And people are welcome to go check out uh, your latest works there and uh, some past works as well. And please feel free to email me about any mm -hmm. uh, comments. I would appreciate mm -hmm. that. And God bless you all. Thank all right. you very much. Thank you so much. I'm Ray Farella right here on Creative Agenda. And stay tuned for the original Wilson Brothers. They're up next here on 89.9 FM WORT Madison.